Today, we are gonna make some grass. No, I'm not in Colorado, so it's not gonna be that kind of grass. It's our techniques that are so simple and sensible, your mowers have practically built Stir themselves. <laughs> Hello folks, it's Mad Dog Merv. Welcome to today's show. Today we are doing a kind of a Halloween theme. Uh, we are building the Warlock. This one. <laughs> this one uh, that came out not too long ago. Uh, we'll do a little building, not much. Uh, I'm going to show you the weird stuff that I did to mine and a couple of really neat surprises. Um, now, I did not want to follow along the lines of the original Warlock. I could have, but I wanted to do something a little bit different. I wanted to make a mystic Warlock, and you'll see what I mean by that here in a few minutes. And I wanted to show you a couple of new items that uh, have been produced that will work great on this kit for those of you who have them. So stick with Mad Dog Merv as we look at my 125th scale MPC Warlock. All right, folks, here we go. I'm going to show you the good, the bad, and the ugly. And there is some ugly on this, not because of the kit, but because of the way I built it. Um, there was a couple of mistakes I made, and we'll talk about that because, well, that's what we do on this channel. So let's get started. So I went ahead and I primed everything on this with the 2x primer just simple just coat everything and then all of the body parts I went ahead and sprayed with what's left of my rust-oleum uh, turquoise waters uh, color shift paint and you can see here how it looks on the bed uh, don't pay attention to the wood just yet but you can see this is the only picture I really have of it at that point now for the wood I'm going to use this ochre khaki as my base and I've decided <laughs> by accident to use the rust wash and then the wash for wood. So here we start with the um, the ochre khaki and just paint that on with the brush. It's good looking color and kind of by accident I use this rush or this rust water of uh, yeah, this rust effect wash and you can see here when it's dry how it kind of gives it a little bit more of an orange tone which I like it you know warmer tone to it and then I go over it with the um, wash for wood that darkens it up a bit and I really really like the effect now for the slats since they are painted they aren't chrome on on the original I went ahead and I used this new thing it's a uh, real colors uh, paint marker uh, this is a tire black, and I'm okay with it. I used it for most of the trim on this build. And you can see here with the uh, all the wood in place, thinking it's looking pretty pretty decent. And here's another angle. I'm going to have to paint the bolts, but we'll get around to that. Now, I wanted to do mine like a true Utah vehicle, meaning jacked up halfway to the moon. <laughs> and these huge gigantic tires on it that's just how we do trucks here in Utah so I used the tires and rims out of the old deserter kit uh, because they are big <laughs> they are really big um, you can see built painted uh, I'll come back and I'll pick out the exhaust and a few other things but to raise the suspension this is the thickness of the styrene that I used and I'd cut it into three small segments and stack it up so I figured that would be a big enough block and you can see here how far it raised it I figured it'd be a big enough block that it would give me the proper clearance guess what it really didn't so someday I'm gonna have to go back look at how high that lifted it in the front though um, I am gonna have to go back and, and make a change at some point in time because as you'll see in a minute it just isn't uh, adequate okay I picked up these beauties from MRS Hobby there's a local guy who 3d prints these um, and sells them to MRS hobbies and so they are sold through MRS hobby shop um, 
look them up online and if you'd like some of these but they are very thin they're very uh, delicate also there's the grill look at this grill and the back support wow 3d printed that looks pretty amazing but there is a little issue with it and I'll get to that in just a moment but look how look how sharp that is went ahead and painted this up with my Alclad chrome which doesn't look too bad on it uh, Wow just that grill is so awesome here's where I ran into the issue there are no headlights or marker lights that come with the kit so what he recommends is that you use some UV resin to make your headlight and make your um, your your marker lights your turn signal um, so I didn't have any of that but I do have some clear resin so I went ahead and mixed some up. Now I painted the inside of the light lenses in uh, an Alclad. And then I went ahead and I painted the markers. Unfortunately, I should have done uh, something different with the marker lights because uh, I don't like how I did this amber color and I don't like how it turned out. And here's the biggest problem. If you run into any issue with it at all, you're done. Uh, it's not like you can dig this stuff out of there. Um... I, I just don't like the way this is engineered, so sorry. But if you've got better talent than I do with uh, like UV resin, great. But you can see how it looks. I mean, it's it's better than the kit, that's for sure. Uh, but I didn't, uh, well, I need practice before I do more of that type of stuff. Here's the engine. It's just going to be curbside, so I just got it built to this point and threw it in so it would have an engine from underneath. As far as the interior goes, I didn't use the cool decal for the uh, instrumentation. I probably should have, but I went ahead and tried to do it all by hand. I like how it turned out okay, and I didn't waste my time with flocking because you're really not going to see it down in there. So here's the door handle. Cut off the old one and carefully glued the super glued the new one in. Uh, looks very nice very very much better than what the kit had in it originally uh, the decals of course gave me a little bit of problem here and there uh, just some little fit issues you can see here where it's kind of wrinkly in the front I could not get those to sit down at all but here look at the grill isn't that really nice looking grill so all right we're gonna go around this thing now after I got the decals on and they dried, and there's a bunch of different options, like here I've got the Power Wagon 150 decal uh, that I decided to use. There's a Dodge decal you can use instead of the Warlock here in the back, but I like the Warlock better. But after all the decals were dry, I went ahead and gave the entire thing a coat of Future um, to not only seal in the decals, but to give it just a better shine. I really do like how it turned out with that. Although you'll notice that the mirrors I'm going to have to take off and put them on the right way because I didn't do that. <laughs> Whoops. Also, it says backup lights need to go in the, uh, the back by the tailgate here. And I couldn't find for the life of me where they would fit back there because there just was no room. So I went without them. Decided to do a little white backup light inside of the tail lamp. Not accurate, but hey, I'd had enough of this kit, I'll just tell you. Um, but here's the hood with that decal. Uh, it's not too bad, but you're definitely, with with the way the hood sits, there's definitely going to be some issues trying to get that decal to sit down in there right. Uh, yes, I use Solvacet, and it's still not perfect. So, But here's some good, just quick views. You can see the trim. Uh, that black trim, which is what the truck had, I suppose, from all the pictures that I've seen. The little chrome step side there. And you can't see the, the carpet very well, so that's why I didn't bother to flock it. Uh, it does sit high, but again, it rubs in the back. Darn it. So yeah, I'm going to have to lift it up a little bit more. Well, folks, thanks for joining us, and hope you got something out of this. We will see you again soon.